All right, hello, welcome back. We are chit chatting. Y'all know normally these chit chats happen on TikTok, okay? But TikTok is not respecting the talent that I am. Instead, recaps will move here to YouTube and they will get broken up for TikTok, all right? Because <laughs> I'm giving y'all a goal. Grab your coffee, grab your wine. It doesn't matter what time of the day you are watching this recap, baby. We are finna chit chat about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. That's right. We are chit chatting about season 13, episode two. That is the most recent episode of this season. Let's get into it. First things first, why are we outside? What are we doing? What are we doing in a world where most pandemic rules have been dropped? Why are we outside in the cold having an English tea between Dorit and Erica Jane? What is this? I don't like it. Please make it stop. At this point, we got to find out who got the voodoo doll on Dorit. Either that or PK trying to set up. Okay, because now we got three men following you in a store while you go to the ATM to get cash out. First of all, ATM. Am I aging myself? Also... Do I just not have enough money? Do the ATM let you get ten thousand dollars? I would have said you could just go push that, <laughs> withdraw ten thousand dollars. God damn. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Dorit goes to get ten thousand dollars out. This is Christmas season. She puts the money in her bag. At some point, I guess she walks away from her shopping cart. She goes to check out and realizes, oh my god, I don't have my bag. They look at security cam footage and find out that three men are following you around. Maybe because, again, I just showed you my age. I call them ATMs. I grew up in an era where you didn't go to the ATM to take cash out by yourself, okay? I grew up in an era where my mother would be at the ATM talking some watch my back, make sure ain't nobody following us, okay? Like, I just don't understand... How you don't have your guards up, your social cues to know that three men been following you. Three men? Girl. Y'all know normally I don't like when the cash trips don't be cash tripping. And Crystal's Vegas trip isn't like the cash trip. So I approve this going to Vegas moment. I love that Sutton and Garcelle are the ones throwing Crystal's little birthday getaway in Vegas. Also, we gonna talk about that too, we continue moment at the end because i feel like it's making sutton seem real prudish but i really don't feel like sutton is being prudish i hope she not being see it for miss sutton i i love the boots from day one okay i like me somebody that we know we don't have to question where they get their money from she didn't already told us she get three hundred thousand dollars a month in alimony okay so i love the opulence that sutton gives us and i'm very much into her dating life especially because sutton is so like quirky you know what i'm saying she gonna give this little dating lady a run for her money that girl said me let a man leave also i want to say that sutton situation is very much sutton situation okay just because you stay at home don't mean that you got to be kicked out of the boardroom portion of the the marriage you know what i'm saying don't mean that the only thing you get to do is plan vacations that he show up late to don't let sutton story be your story amen amen so here to tell you that maybe Crystal's brother didn't really like his fiance, okay? So the story goes that the pandemic happened and Crystal's brother and his fiance at the time were in China. Crystal and her mom got worried. They wanted him to come to the States. He could come. She couldn't because she only had a Chinese passport. He then leaves her and comes to the States. So you ain't, you ain't want to be with that girl. I'm, I'm not here to tell you about your feelings, you know what I'm saying? But it don't feel like, I would have just left my feet. We was getting ready to get married right before the Ponderosa and I'm just going to leave you in the middle of a Ponderosa? Come on, it don't, it don't seem, there, there is a little bit more to the story. Also, question of the day, how would you feel if your sibling brought home a partner who is 20 years younger than? Let's chit chat about that down below in the comments. I want to know your answers. I don't know. I don't know. Me personally, I wouldn't care. Like, if that's what you want to do, okay? As long as everybody grown. <laughs> it ain't my life. <laughs> Second question of the day. Would you want your partner to recreate a movie such as Pretty Woman for you for your anniversary? I, listen, you people be into what they be into. I know Mecca had did that video talking about some she don't see what's good about Love and Basketball. As for me, I'm always going to watch Love and Basketball. You know what I'm saying? So if Pretty Woman is your zhuzh, um, PK could have made it a little more 
grand in the beginning. It got grand at the end, but it could have started off a little bit more grand. And I feel like if it would have started off a little bit better, we wouldn't have seen the breakdown that we got from Dorit. Dorit, rather PK had Kyle bring Dorit to the hotel. She was part of it. And Dorit began to feel very much out of control and she started spiraling. She wanted to know where her kids was at, what was going on. Now it's being robbed twice. Okay. I get it. I get it. I'm not in control. This is weird, okay? Um, he then had a stylist come in to give a very Julia Roberts-esque red dress with the white gloves. He uh, uh, rented some jewelry. Okay, speaking of rented jewelry, did y'all see that story about Vincent Herbert? Come to my TikTok. Maybe we'll talk about that. Okay, um, rented out the jewelry, you know. They had a great dinner. He made her drink. It It was cute. Good luck to them. In all of this, PK found time to throw shade at Kyle and Mauricio. Talking about some maybe if Mauricio did things like this for Kyle, maybe we wouldn't be here. And I swear to God, I hope that age as well. I hope that his wife ain't over there doing a the brown chicken brown cow with Mauricio while he popping big ish with his chest. You know, we got that Vanity Fair article wherein we found out that the producers will type something on their screen and hold it up or whatever to, to to get the housewives to talk about certain things. That's how I felt about the Kyle Dorit Carr moment. I don't feel like Dorit was talking to her friend about her marriage. I felt like it was being produced and I didn't really enjoy that. And again, I hope to God this is not happening and Dorit is doing a brown chicken brown cow with Mauricio. Um, back to PK and Dorit, the, the singer who sung Take My Breath Away. Maybe something. I, it just wasn't for me. That it just what Keith Lee say. It, it's it's for me in the way that I like my singing. Y'all see my hands? It wasn't for me. <laughs> okay, the end of the episode ended with Kyle and Mauricio having a birthday party for Portia. Portia is now fifteen. That made me feel okay because we remember when the girl was like barely learning how to talk. Y'all gonna bring up the rumors? And then, like, the daughter was, like, this big, make it stop, okay? Um, I, I don't know. Everything about that whole moment was cringe. You could feel the disconnect between Kyle and Mauricio, which is why, on some levels, you can't sell me on a, oh, we're only doing this for publicity. Like, there's something there. What it is ain't really our business. But there is something there. And I feel like it becomes our business or we want it to be our business when we can see what you're denying you know what i'm saying like anyway um they are just distant it's really ice cold anyway kyle tells mauricio's mom that mauricio has a tattoo whilst mauricio was a big kid he felt like it was his truth to tell his mother um, but Kyle knew that because when she told the mom about the tattoo she then immediately followed up with a joke and was like, oh, maybe he doesn't like covering her track. So it was like, grow, you knew. The show ends with them going to Vegas, touching down, everybody getting situated. Sutton, which I didn't like, took a page from Diana Jenkins' book and had her clothes flew out to the hotel. So the room was already set up. Mm. I, you know, like I like the opulence, but we we've seen that stunt before. Get another travel stunt or something. I don't know. I didn't like it. Um, Dorit didn't bring glam to Vegas, so she will be dressing herself. I'm interested to see how that goes. I want to see the difference between what we get and what she pays for. You know, you know. Um, and it goes off. It's a to be continued because it wouldn't be Bravo. It wouldn't be Housewives if it wasn't. And it ends at the Magic Mike show and then Sutton storming off. It is set up to make it look like Sutton is being a prude in the moment, but I don't feel like Sutton is being a prude in the moment. I hope she's not being a prude in the moment. I, listen, I'm not a male review type of guy. I mean, me, if we gonna go to the script club, I wanna see the girls. I want, I want the clappers, I want the boot. That's what I wanna see. That That's for me. I don't, I don't want no surfboard abs gyrating all of it put a shirt on what is this the pr proposal relax get to it in a minute. 